In this video tutorial, we're going to be sharing with you some really basic Photoshop techniques that once mastered is going to add a lot of creativity to your layouts here inside Photoshop. Now we're going to be using the Easy Album Toolbox extension, which we've developed to work with Photoshop, that comes with any of the various template collections that we offer. Now the Easy Album Toolbox should not be confused with the full featured Easy Album design software. The Easy Album Toolbox just has a few basic features to get you started when you're looking for an album design software that works here with Photoshop. So let's show you a couple of things here. We're going to go ahead and click on the Create New Document tool and we're going to use Easy Album to create a basic page layout. So we'll do a 10 by 20 or choose the double page layout option here and go ahead and click on OK. And all that does is create us a blank canvas with which to work from. I'm then going to switch over here to the rectangular marquee tool here in Photoshop and make a selection over on the left hand side of my layout. Now what we're doing here is defining where we want to fill an area of image openings. I'm then going to come over here into bridge and select a two opening template. I like this one right here so I just double click on this template file here in bridge and those two layers will automatically be generated and put into my layout. Now I do get this option to insert images but I'm not going to do that right now and you can see I just have two layers selected over here on the left hand side. Now I'm going to go ahead and make a selection on the right hand side and I'm going to choose a three opening template for that. So I'm going to choose this one right here and double click on it. And three layers will be generated on the right hand side and I get this option to insert images. I'm going to say yes. And immediately one of the image openings is turned red and I get the secondary confirmation if I want to use bridge to select an image. This is where most people will make the mistake when working with our templates. So if you download the sample template files, pay close attention to this part right here. When we get this confirmation, do we want to use bridge to select an image? We have choices between yes, no, skip, or delete. Right now, we don't want to make any choice. What we're going to do is we're going to go into bridge, select the image we intend to use for that opening, and then choose yes. So we don't actually open the image, we just click on it to highlight it in bridge and then automatically that image will be resized to fit that image opening. And then it will move right onto the next image opening once we hit enter. So you can see we have this image opening here on the far left selected. So then I'm going to switch over to a different category of textures here and then choose yes again to insert via bridge and it will insert that texture file into that image opening here on the left. Now here's an interesting point. Notice the transformation handles are much larger. This represents the actual size of the texture. You can see it here. But only a little sliver of that texture is being shown because the rest of it is being hidden by the layer mask. So that's important because when we get into the second part of the video where we show you how to edit and be creative with different Photoshop techniques, we'll be using layer masks quite extensively. So let's go ahead and finish populating this layout. So we'll go ahead and choose this image. Drop that into place. Again, it pauses. I can reposition the image. Go ahead and hit return. And then we have two more image openings. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to come into bridge and I'm going to actually select two images. So I'm going to hold, uh, select one, hold my control key down or command key on a Mac and select my second one and then choose yes. And then one by one, each one of those images will be inserted. I can position them. And phase one is complete. We have a great looking layout as is, certainly, but we can also modify this layout to better work with the images that we have in the layout and also do some additional creative things. This is where it gets really interesting because we're going to be doing some really creative things that are very, very simple to understand but offer us a lot of 
creativity when it comes to doing various layouts here inside Photoshop and we're always going to be working with layer masks. If there's one thing to learn in Photoshop it's layer mask, layer mask, layer mask because they really offer such a wide variety of creativity. So first things first let's take this image here on the left and we want to expose more of the image than what is currently being exposed. And the reason that only a small sliver of this image is being exposed is of course because we have a layer mask associated with this layer and that layer mask is hiding part of the image. Let me show you one quick technique. If I hold down my shift key and click on the little black and white layer mask, what happens? We get the big red X and essentially what that does is it temporarily turns off the layer mask revealing all of the image that we have to see. So you can see this image is there's a lot more image there than if we turn on the layer mask. So what we're going to do is we're going to make the layer mask bigger revealing more of the image. So here's how we're going to do it. There's a tiny link between the image and the layer mask. So we click on that tiny link and then click on the layer mask, the little black and white icon, and then I'm going to go ahead and hit Control T, be Command T on a Mac, of course, and just drag out that layer mask to reveal more of my image. And that's about how much I want, so I go ahead and hit Return, and you can see that's all there is to making that small adjustment. And then I relink the two together, and that's all the adjustment I wanted to make. Now the next big adjustment is here on our texture layer. Again, I'm going to unlink the layer mask. Clicking on my layer mask, I'm going to hit Control T or Command T on a Mac and stretch that out all the way over, revealing that texture. Go ahead and hit Return. And then again, I'm going to link those two back together. So that in and of itself, you can see how slowly but surely things are changing. So I'm going to go ahead and set my background color to black because I want to pinpoint something. If we look now, you can clearly see that my background is black. And you can see on this particular texture right here on the edge, there's some white bits. And also over here on the left, there's some white bits. What if I wanted these white areas to actually be transparent? so I could see through to the black background. How could I do that? Well, there's an interesting technique to do that very easily. So let me show you how that's done. I'm going to be on my texture layer. I'm going to do select all. And then let's do edit, copy. So essentially what I've done here is I've copied the entire texture. And then I'm going to click over here in my layer mask. Now here's another technique. If I hold down my Alt key, remember earlier I showed you, if I hold down my Shift key, it turns off the layer mask with that big black X. If I hold down my Alt key or my Option key on a Mac, clicking on the layer mask, we get to view the actual layer mask, which right now is just basic black and white. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to paste that texture. So we'll do Edit and Paste. And you can see that texture is sitting right in the center. So I'm just going to slide it over into position. And I'm going to make it a little bit bigger here. Not much, but a little bit bigger. And then go ahead and deselect. And say, well, now what are we doing? Well, we don't really know what we're doing because we can't see how that effect of copying the texture to the layer mask, what effect that had, if anything. Now keep in mind that we're working on layer masks, we're only working in black and white, or grayscale. So you can have various shades of gray, on a, but you cannot have any color on a layer mask. So let's go back over here, clicking on the texture, and you can see already we've had some effect because it's changed color a little bit. So there has been some effect. Now let's go back over here to layer mask. What would happen if we inverted the layer mask? Now you can see that's even had a greater impact. But it might be difficult to see what's actually transpiring here. But if we look closely, the areas that were white are actually black now. And you're actually seeing through. 
And the reason being is if we go back over here, let's go look at our layer mask again. You can see that this area that was white, let's go ahead and invert that again. See these areas that were white? When you invert that, and the way I inverted, by the way, is hitting Control-I, the areas that were white have now turned black, and the areas that were mostly dark have been inverted now. Now, we can get a little bit more creative, and we can actually use a levels adjustment on our layer mask. And watch what happens when I pull over this white point. See the areas in the middle getting lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter and lighter? Now, let me go back and show you the texture here, because once you understand what's happening, it'll all make a lot more sense. Notice that when we look at the texture over here in the layers palette, it's quite bright. The blue is a quite bright aqua blue, whereas if we look at it here in the layout, it's a more muted uh, blue. And that's because the layer mask is somewhat gray. Somewhat gray is hiding somewhat of those blue pixels, which in turn is making everything darker. Now watch what happens when we do the levels adjustment. I'm going to pull over this white point. See, the gray pixel area is actually getting less and less and less. And then I'm going to pull over this black point. Now watch the black areas. Notice how they're getting darker. See that? And then this kind of, we can kind of play with it here in the middle. Now watch what effect that has on the overall layout. Let's go back to our texture. So now you notice that the blue areas, the blues, are brighter than they were previously and that's because of the adjustments that we did here on the layer mask and you can see different areas of the black showing through as well so you have some really interesting things here now another technique that's fun to do is a hue and saturation adjustment layer and we'll choose the colorize option and notice how now we have actually changed the color of the texture altogether so we'll boost up our saturation, we'll lower our lightness a bit, and we can change the color to be anything we want it to be, which is kind of fun. So you can see how we can impact that very easily. Now let's go back over here to the layer mask. Again, I hold down the Alt key to look at the layer mask. And I'm actually going to bring up another texture file. Because there's nothing saying that we have to use, in, in this layer mask technique, there's nothing saying we have to use the same texture for the layer mask that we used. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually paste in that new texture file. You see there, there's the new texture file. And I'm just going to go ahead and reposition it so we have a completely different look. And again, maybe invert it. Notice how these areas over here on the top and on the right are getting darker. I'm going to do my levels adjustment to really lighten up the area in the middle. But at the area on the fringes, I'm going to darken that up. So see what's happened here. Just these areas around the fringes are dark. So watch how that impacts the layout. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to do a small adjustment to our layer mask so we can see see how interesting effect that has. So we're actually transparent right through here and up here at the top left and the bottom left transparent right through here on the right hand side but the underlying texture let me turn off our hue and saturation adjustment layer See how we, you could see now how we had the original blue. Now, if I change my background color to white, let's change the whole background. There we go. Now you can see how we've changed the edge of this texture from what it was. Remember, let's go ahead and turn off our layer mask. That's what it was, and this is what it is now. So it's interesting, we use the same texture, but we can change the fringes and edges 
using the edges and fringes of another texture and create a whole different look. So it's an interesting way of going about making changes. And while it may seem complicated, uh, once you understand the different techniques, watch this video over a couple, two, three times over, and I think you'll see a very interesting technique develop and experiment with some of the textures that you may have and see if you can create some very interesting results. Now again, <clears throat> the other thing to keep in mind is we're not limited. Um, we could, for example, introduce a different texture altogether, which might be interesting, underneath one that we already have. And remember, we can use that hue and saturation adjustment option, choosing the colorize option, and we can give that underlying texture any type of complementary color we want and by adjusting the lightness we can make it darker or lighter whatever we want to do and create some very compelling and interesting techniques so try out all those different techniques experiment with those a bit and I think you'll find you'll be able to create some very interesting layouts with a lot more creativity than maybe what you're doing right now once you employ this technique give it a try